break it down there are only two groups of people in the world those with power and those who want power take your hypothetical overworked underpaid cab driver and lost heaven who finds himself on the payroll of a prominent crime family we're through anywhere fast suddenly we're not talking hypotheticals but about tommy angelo and his work for the salary crime family but there are times when the work doesn't fit the man Take when Tommy cornered Salieri's man, Frank Coletti. Coletti had gotten pinched and became a federal informant. And, no surprise, Salieri wanted him in the ground, pronto. Coletti told Tommy he did what he needed to do to protect his family. And there was something about his story. It hit home for Tommy, and Coletti walked. When Salieri found out, he ordered a hit on Tommy. If you cross Salieri and his boys, you're dead. And that's when Tommy Angelo did what was best for his own wife and kid. Entered witness protection. Mr. Angelo? Uh, yes? Mr. Salieri sends his regards. You saw this type of thing happen again in Empire Bay years later. Different circumstances, different people, but consistent. And of course, that would be the events that went down with Vito Scaletta and Joe Barbaro. You remember the wise guys we used to see when we was kids? Yeah, why? The guy we're meeting here is one of them. Scaletta hoped working for the mob would allow him to provide a better life for his mother and sister. Where'd you get all this money, Vito? Scaletta and Barbaro were like brothers. In those days, you were hard-pressed to be able to hire one and not end up with the other at his side. You have to understand, the mob's a group of people who do just about anything to get what they want. Sure, they may throw around words like family, but there's no such thing as loyalty in their world, not really. What'd they tell you, Vito? Take care of me and all's forgiven? Scaletta and Barbaro, they were the exception to the rule. But even then, it was the thirst for power that drove them, and that's the thing that brought them down in the end. Hey, hey, hey what the hell's going on? Where are they taking Joe? Sorry, kid. Joe wasn't part of our deal. Which, of course, is how Scaletta ended up working out of a shithole in New Bordeaux. Now, you can make a compelling case that without Scaletta, you'd have never had New Bordeaux's own crime boss, Lincoln Clay. Lincoln was born with nothing. Essentially, grew up with nothing. That is, until he met Sammy Robinson. In Lincoln, he was forever bonded to Sammy and his brother Ellis. And despite of all the crimes he committed, I have no doubt he'd have laid down his own life for either one of them. No question. He lost everything that mattered most to him in the Night of Blood, save for his friendship with a morally bankrupt CIA agent. Point is, Lincoln Clay brought down the entire infrastructure of the mob in New Bordeaux, built up his own thing to take its place. Even still, what he did wasn't motivated by business. It was all about his family. I'm here to make you pay for what you did to Sammy and Ellis Robinson. These men were fully aware that what they were doing was wrong, so redemption's not a possibility here. Let me see your hands. But what I will say is when forced to make a choice between organized crime and the people they cared about most, these men chose family every time. Of course, as long as you've got people who are willing to steal, maim, torture, and murder to get ahead, you're never getting rid of the mob.